Welcome participants. Now we are going to move in lab demo 3. As I promised, I am going to introduce to you all possible knitting technologies uh, and we have these machines in our lab. So today we are going to demonstrate you single bed circular machines. We have already covered this machine in lecture number 3 and 4. So uh, now let us see how this machine runs uh, in real scenario. Just a quick recap, I hope you remember this video. So how this particular single bed circular machine is utilizing the yarn and creating fabric with the help of knitting action. In this particular machine, we also have seen how the sinker also helps in loop formation in holding, releasing and making loop. Okay. So now we are going to see how we place yarn in this particular machine, what happens at the initial stage, how the fabric is created, how you can use or make different designs of the fabric using this type of machine. This is the most simple machine in circular knitting. It is single bed, just one bed is used and also it is a single feeder system. So just one yarn is used in the knitting process and uh, this type of machines is actually used to create tubular fabrics and especially for making socks. Let us see how it works. So this is actually the machine. Uh, if you look at these machines, you have the yarn on the top of the machine platform and this is the cylinder where this is the zoom part of this particular cylinder part. So the first thing is how we place yarn on this machines. Uh, you can see through this video. So this is called yarn threading. So similar to uh, weft knitting flat machine which we introduced in demo number 2, we also have to provide yarn and that yarn has to pass through certain sequence to feed this yarn to the needle head. So let us see how we start this. You have the cylinder, you, this, these are all um, yarn is first passed through this guide, this hole. So you can see here we are, we are starting from here, this is the guide and then all tensioner system, we are catching this yarn, we are passing through all holes so that yarn follows a particular path. This is done to avoid ballooning uh, so that there should not be yarn breakages, the yarn and tension has to be adjusted. This is again yarn is passed through a constant speed meter. This releases the yarn only at a constant speed to avoid tension variation. Again through one guide and finally we supply yarn through this feeder part. So this is the feeder part, you have the hole here. You pass this yarn and you place this yarn from the bottom. So now when you rotate this particular cylinder, yarn is already placed and you can see these needles are actually on the clearing position. So the needle which is at the topmost position, it will first catch this yarn and all the needles which is passing through that clearing position, it will keep catching this yarn. This is how the yarn is thread on the machine and this yarn is then uh, taken from the downward part of the cylinder and that yarn segment is fixed at the bottom of the machine. Let us see initial run. Initial run is little bit difficult because uh, to catch the yarn, the latch of the needle need to be open. We have, uh, there was no old loop so it was difficult to predict like all the latch of the needle will be open across uh, this circumference. So we need some kind of brush to open the latch for all the needle so that it can keep catching the yarn in during the rotation. So let us see, so when you run the machine, when you run the machine, so this yarn will be supplied to all needles but not all the needles will be catching the yarn because uh, the latch is not open. So we must make sure the latch remain open whenever yarn is present. So you can see here the needle do not able to catch the yarn. So naturally we are opening the latch, so 
So those needles who are open, they only catches the yarn and uh, we keep doing this process till all the needles catch the yarn. So once the needle catch the yarn, once the first loop is generated, you will find some kind of uniformity in the motion because uh, the yarn itself help in latch opening and closing. So knitting actions uh, starts repeating in each particular needles and this is how the fabric gets created. Uh, so the first few cycles are little bit complicated. You will not observe very uniform fabric, but once uh, all the needles catches the yarn, loops is being formed in all needles, then you will observe more uniform production. Okay. And this fabric is being pulled through the hollow part of the cylinder. So once uh, the needles start catching, you can anytime replace any color of yarn and you can create different uh, stripes. So this is useful in design purpose. So you might have seen the socks of different stripes. Uh, also there are a lot of complicated designs are there. Uh, such machines are also useful. Uh, but in this machine also you can anytime change uh, the color of the yarn and you can create uh, different designs. You would not be able to control the stitch length because uh, uh, here somehow th there is a problem with uh, the cam system because cam is locked inside this bar. So while running condition we would not be able to control the stitch length or the stitch cam setting which is very useful uh, in controlling the thread density. So you have seen in the flat bed where with the help of knob anytime you can raise or downward make the stitch cam go down. So with the help of that you can control the loop density in the fabric. But in case of circular knitting somehow we have to fix the stitch cam setting because to change the stitch cam setting you have to open the machine and then do the setting by manual. So here you can see how you can change the color of the yarn and the fabric is being formed and the fabric is being taken from the bottom side. So anytime any color uh, of yarn you can simply replace. Okay. So in terms of design variability, flat bed is much much useful compared to circular bed. In circular bed the only thing you can do while running the machine is you can simply change the yarn color. But in case of flat bed, multiple uh, design possibilities are possible like controlling loop length, increasing, decreasing number of needles. So uh, in terms of uh, research, flat bed is much, much useful. But in terms of productions, because you can see how fast uh, it is revolving, in terms of production, circular knitting is more useful. So uh, this is uh, the fourth part where you can see how the fabric is being taken up. So fabric is being formed. So you can see this is how it is rotating. The cam is rotating, the yarn is supplied and the fabric is being generated. Now you can see how the fabric is being taken. This is where the fabric is being formed. This is tubular fabric and it is hanging. The and you can see here, this is the dead weight. So you need a weight to carry the fabric, pull the fabric from the knitting zone. So this is how fabric take up is done. The working of circular knitting machine is very simple um, and also the flat bed knitting machine is also very simple. So we have completed two uh, basic technologies in knitting related to weft knitting. One is flat bed. In demo 2, we introduced you flat bed. In this particular demo, we introduced you circular bed. Now, uh, from the next week, we are going to start a new chapter of knitting technologies, which is related to double bed machine. So now, instead of one bed, we will be working with two beds. Initially, I will give you some kind of theory how those machines are running. So stay tuned. Thank you very much for listening.